Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, another episode of building Jarrow Road Station. Now we're over here at South Shield Station um, mainly just to have a look at the detail that I placed in the little goods office over here um, because Last week, as you know, we built, made all that furniture and was it really worth spending a week doing it? Well, I think this is going to be the answer. I mean, we're only about a couple of feet away and looking through the window you can actually see something going on. And uh, I think this is the point uh, I'm trying to get across because um, buildings are living things when you put detail inside of them. I mean there you can see two figures, uh, warehouse staff, uh, a telephone on the desk, some paperwork, there's a filing cabinet at the back there, a green filing cabinet, just make out the drawers and uh, if we pan to the left we should be able to see the cabinet or the shelving, that's a shelving unit <laughs> couldn't remember what I put in the room so long ago but the, yeah, the, the point that I'm trying to get at is, is that if the building's got something inside uh, then well it brings it to life I think in my mind and and that's why I I do this um, detailing inside the rooms. Right, so here we are. We're back at the bench and we're just about to start fitting out the rooms with this furniture. Uh, this bundle is for the refreshments room. These few items is for the ticket office. That's the two desks, two chairs. This is for the station master's office. And these three benches and two um, small coffee tables, if you like, are for the waiting room. So, the room I'm going to do first is the refreshments room. I have added some posters to the walls and I've put in a name board up against the far wall there. So this is now ready to be kitted out, but there's just one or two more details I want to add to the counter before I place it into the refreshments room. Um, I've gone in my con come and handy box and I found this bit of plastic flashing and um, I'm looking at this here and I can turn that into one of those baby burkos for the hot water for the teas because I like the idea of the round top so if I just scrape the, the flashing back clean it up paint it and maybe stick in a, a piece of wire to form a tap shape this would then become a baby burko I've cleaned up the flashing, um, rounded the top over, so I want to keep the radius. I've scored uh, a line roughly about two millimeters up from the base of this baby burko, and I've drilled a hole ready to take the tap. Now I've bent a little bit of copper wire one way, then the other, and then I've just flipped this over. So. Let's just take this piece of copper wire out of the jaws of my pliers and then you can see the shape I have formed for the tap. Now the spout is a little bit long at the moment so I've got to trim that down and I've got to trim this length down as well. So what I'll do is I'll cut that down and then stick that into the burko and then I can super glue it to the counter. That's the baby burko finished. Um, 
all I've got to do now is just paint that. Um, yeah, that is so tiny to make. Um, that um, tap is roughly about uh, two and a half mil across and about one and a half mil down. And then I've got a little swan neck there which goes into the burko. Now that the tap is one of those that you pull around, so you could pull around to let the water out. So I've got to paint all this silver, uh, paint the tap uh, red, paint that silver. Might even put a little tiny brass dot on the top, so where you lift the lid up to fill it up with water, maybe something like that anyway. So that's the baby burko done. So the next thing I'm going to concentrate on is the till, which I'll put just in front of it, just there. So this is the idea I had for the till. So I've got a strip of 6mm card, one strip of 6mm card and a strip of plastic. Now I've already pre-bent it um, around a 3mm drill. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to super glue this to the card. Just let that uh, soak into the card for a little bit so we don't end up staining the um, Glass. Right, so press that onto the card, leaving it proud by a little bit, just a couple of millimetres. Just let that get a hold. Obviously, it's a, it's a bit bigger than than what I need it at the moment because I'm going to have to trim it down once it's all glued. So we've got something like that. Then we'll glue another piece of 1mm card on top of that once we've glued this onto that card. Just lift it out of the way for a minute. Press that home because you really want that to stick. Then what we'll do then, we'll glue another piece of 1mm card to this and then a 2mm with a chamfer on it. Now you can see all the layers of card. There's three pieces of 1mm, one, two, three. Then you've got the clear plastic which I've bent over. And then we've got the 2mm right at the front. Now you might think to yourself, car that looks huge at the moment. Well, it won't be because that's where I'm going to cut it off, just there. So that there is only 5mm tall, which is about a, a, a foot in height. Um, so it's quite a big till, big old fashioned till, I'd say. But while it's like this, you can trim it even smaller if you wanted to and that's what I'll probably do while it's um, well manageable to handle so I am cutting it back now to make it smaller so I'm just taking a millimeter off either side now because we've used super glue this is going to be really tough to cut so I'm just doing it gently a score at a time and let the blade do the work. So I'm just doing the final cut and uh, we're almost there. So we'll just take that bit off, don't want that bit. What I do, because I've kinked the glass by cutting through it, as you can see there, there's a little kink on the end. So if I stand it up that way, I can just take that kink off with the blade. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. Right, so I've cut it down. It's 4mm from that top edge down to that edge, roughly. And what actually happened when I was cutting through, the back piece of card has come off, but it's left 
the other uh, piece of card that stuck to it so that just came away but basically it's made it look a little bit smaller so I'm glad it's come off so now we can super glue that to a piece of 2 mil card it's a little bit bigger than what I need which is ideal because I can handle it then so I just stick that on there move it around a little bit to about there and we'll let that go off and once that's gone off I can cut the rest of the card off of it and then I can paint it and turn it into a till. I'm just putting in the finishing touches to the till. Uh, I've painted it up, it's blue uh, with a silver drawer that pops out. I'm just putting, well I'll try and put nine dots uh, on the front of the till. Oh well, I've only I've only got six. <laughs> well, uh, that'll do. Yeah, it's just the brush isn't tiny enough. <laughs> Right, so that's the counter done. So that now can be glued in the building. Well, Fred and Charlie took their time getting the counter up the stairs, through the door and into the room. I think they've earned a cup of tea. Right, said Fred. Well, yeah, he says Charlie. So that's the first piece in. And um, now we can kit out the refreshments room with the rest of the furniture and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. I think Fred and Charlie have been busy. Looks like that cup of tea has worked. They've worked really hard to get all this furniture in. Now that that's done I can really um, put on the side wall now and uh, see what it looks like. A little bit on the tricky side um, trying to get all the walls and the joints to line up. Um, but yeah, um, it's together and you can make out some of the detail. You can make out the till on the counter there just. And uh, in there you can see the back of the chair. And in there we can see the tables, not necessarily the punters. But uh, that may come to light. I'm going to turn the lights on. Forgive the pun. <laughs> but there. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to concentrate on now is the waiting room. Uh, as you can see I've already added some posters on the back wall so that adds a little bit of interest once uh, the lights are on. And most of all I want to keep these cables in place so hence why I want to get this floor in. Um, painted the floor and I've also given it a little bit of varnish and I've varnished all the desks as well so hopefully once they're cured we can um, start doing the station master side and I've already put some of the furniture into the station master's office uh, so that's come along quite well and I've also added a northeastern map on the wall. Just a little bit of a detail there. So this is how I've laid out the waiting room. Um, all those seats and tables are now super glued to the floor so I can um, varnish up the woodwork now. It's a lot easier to do it when it's uh, stuck down. No messy fingers this time. I'll just uh, put on a very light coat onto the seats and tables. Right, so that finishes off the waiting room and it looks quite busy. Yeah, so I've added some magazines and a vase of flowers. 
Now all that is, is just a, a piece of straw, 3mm diameter straw, cut to about 3.5mm tall, and then it just drops a little bit of foliage in there, so it just looks like a, yeah, a vase of flowers. Just a little detail. Well, that was a little bit tricky. Um, it did not go according to plan. Um, because it's such a small room, uh, I had to remove one of the seats. You can see it there in the background here. Because these guys were banging their heads on the fireplace. I forgot about the chimney. So I had to quickly take this seat off. Uh, repair the floor and then refit the floor um, yes uh, did not go according to plan but good thing is the floor is in and it's sturdied up the cables a little bit they're not rocking about to and fro and there is still detail in there you can't see it yet but with the two seats in there and uh, the little table I think uh, that, that's plenty for that so yeah I don't get it right all the time <laughs> it's time to focus on the station master's office um, the varnish is dry so what I'm looking at now is adding a few details to put on top of the desk two things I want to add to this is a telephone and a lamp and maybe some little bits of paperwork um, now I have built a telephone before, um, it took me uh, three attempts um, making out a card, but this time, thanks to Nick Foltz, it sent me how he does it, and this is one of his telephones. He's carved it into a piece of plastic, and then stuck a uh, looks like a piece of wire because you can see the shiny end there across the top and then just painted it black with a white dot in the middle um, yeah so thanks for sharing your ideas Nick and uh, I'm gonna make one out of a piece of plastic Wait, I have found a piece of flashing which matches uh, this flashing. Um, it's roughly um, three millimeters wide by roughly 2.5 millimeters high. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, basically I'm just going to copy what Nick has done here. And basically all he's done is trimmed down the plastic so I'll just do that first trim down the plastic so the good thing about um, YouTube is people that follow you myself come up with suggestions and even ideas on how to do things like this especially small things I mean I can keep a hold of that and it's not going to fly off like it did with the the card so we've got the width yeah that's two millimeters what I'll do now is I'll put a chamfer down the front looks like about two two millimeters is I just put this last final cut there you go so I've got the ball nose shape at the front just check against yeah it was about maybe a bit more You roughly come down to at least a millimeter or so, 1.5 that is. Nope, need a bit more. Yeah, 
A bit, a bit more. Just flatten it out a little bit. Right, so we've got the front made. Now there's a little bit of a dip about this point here, a little bit of a V, so we'll do that. We'll cut a V into it. Obviously that's where the piece of copper wire is going to go for the handset. Just trim that back there a little bit further as well. Hmm. So the depth of the phone is roughly three and a half millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters max. Yeah, that's about four millimeters there. So we've got the, we've got the little V there where the handset's going to go. And that point there is where I'm going to cut the phone off, just behind. So I'm just creating a really sharp edge there. So when it's done, I'll be able to cut it off. Now, last time I was making one of these, it pinged off. So. Hopefully it won't ping off this time. I have just cut uh, a piece of copper wire and I stuck it onto the phone, if you like. But what I've done with this piece of copper wire is I folded the ends very, very slightly so it looks like a handset, as you can see. So that's ready for painting. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another one for the other end. So I'm going to make two phones. One for the station master's office and one for the ticket office. Painted, it does look like a phone if you just turn it around at various angles. Now that was a lot easier to make than trying to make it out of card. Because I had full control of the blade and uh, it wasn't going to ping out anywhere and everywhere like the last ones did. Um, the only problem I have now is to cut that off um, which I'll do once the paint is dried. We have finished with our phones for now now we're going to work on a desktop lamp. Um, I've got a base already pre-made um, it's chamfered on all four sides. This is roughly um, 4.5 across, 3mm deep, and it's just a piece of flash. And I think this comes with the gates kit, the wheels gates, so I've kept that. And uh, so there's one base done. Uh, as you can see, I've already pre drilled the hole. And um, basically, I've already sh I'm using the chamfer that's already with this piece of flashing. So I need to drill a little hole in the center before I cut the other chamfer. So I'll just get it started. I don't want to drill into my mat. Get it started and I can pick it up. Just bore the hole through, that's it job done. And what I'll do now is I'll chamfer it the opposite way. Roughly there. So we have a copper wire and a two mil drill bit. So I'm doing just wrapping it around something like that just so I can get a swan neck. What I'll do is I hold it there with my thumb and then pull it back. But I want to pull the long leg back so that's going to go through the base. So just hold, hold it there with the thumb and then pull it back. So roughly so it's around about 90 degrees. 
Let me just straighten it out a little bit. I need pliers for this job. Small set of pliers, put it back. That's it, something like that. And then we'll just bend that round a bit more. After something like that. So now you've got your shape like that, it's just holding it on the S bend there and then bending this short leg at 90 degrees back on itself. So you've got that like that. The reason being is when we come to glue the lamp, it'll glue onto that piece of copper wire. So the next thing we need to do is glue the base onto the copper strip like we've got there. Now it roughly works out from the top of the curve there down to the base. It works out roughly about seven millimeters. Yeah, seven millimeters. Right, so now we've got a base glued on. What we need now is our actual lamp. Um, I think I'll use a little piece of straw for that. Right, so I've got a 3mm diameter straw here. I'm just marking it at 6mm, the pencil, and I'm marking it at 3mm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole right through this straw. And then I'm going to cut the straw in half. What I'm do is put a toothpick or something in the straw so when I cut through, I don't squash the straw. So I've put the toothpick through and you can see where the hole has come through both sides. What I'll do is I'll split the straw right between the two holes that have already been drilled. So that's I'm split that side and I'll turn it over and then I'll split the straw on that side. Right, so what I'll do now is when my pencil line is, I'll just cut through the straw, rolling it. Hopefully not squashing the straw. Just got to cut that off there. So once you've separated the two halves of the straw, just give them a little roll up between your fingers and then place the straw onto a piece of copper wire, like so, with the curve facing in over, as you can see there, and just let that go right round and then come back on itself. I just hold that there, you can see that now, hence the good thing about this, I've left that piece of wire long so we can cut it back. So what we'll do now is we'll hold that in place with my thumbnail, spin it around so it's so the curve is facing the desk. And what we'll do now is get a little bit of super glue. And we can glue that copper wire in place. But we want the lamp to face down towards the desk, so it needs twisting around a little bit. It's not quite there yet. Right there. Drop a little bit of super glue in there. That's in. We'll just leave that to go off. So, as you can see, once that piece of copper is cut off, that will look like a desktop lamp. Just a case of painting it. And to finish these off, just requires a coat of paint. So I'm just doing the 
typical green as you'd see on these. I've already painted the underside of these lamps white. Uh, the frame and the base is a bronze. Not sure if that's in keeping to what these look like originally. But uh, So, just finishing this off now. As you can see, I've already pre-drilled a hole into the desk to take the lamp. So I'm just putting a tiny bit of super glue. Onto the lamp, and then we'll just pop that in the hole. There we go. Alright, so I'm just putting everything on the desks now. Um, I've added the phone and the lamp to that one, so I'm just putting the phone onto the desk on this one. Tweezers for this. Drop it on there. Hope it leaves go. Quickly turn it around. Right, do nicely. There you go. A phone and a lamp on the station master's desk. So the next thing I want to make uh, for the desks is a typewriter. Um, just using a bit of a flashing again. It's quite chunky this, this stuff. It measures 7mm um, across there but about 6mm thick which is ideal. Um, so I want to cut that much off. What I want to do, I want to create a divot in there and then sweep that back round. So I'm just going to flush the sides, get that a little bit flush. Make sure it's equal. I'll do the same this side. Take that edge off. Oh yeah, that's not looking too bad. Because I want to keep the shape that I have here. So what I'll do now is I'll just scoop that back from there to that lip. So a form a radius shape. Something like that, as you can see, it's got a curve. So that'll do. That'll, that'll do nicely. So we've got a basic shape. The next thing I'm going to do is cut a V in there. Quite a deep V. Right, so I'll get me. Got to file it now, make it round. Just using the tip of the needle file because I don't want it too big. At the same time, I will flatten that, with it. get that round in there, just, just basically tidying that up. Yeah, that looks good. Right, I just want to round the front over. You can see I've got that's what I'm looking for. 
just want to see I've got a nice curve there I want the same on that edge so I'll just get the blade again just take a little bit off of that edge I'm going to cut that off just about there so what I'm doing I'm doing a pre-cut score here going quite deep but I don't want to cut all the way through yet because I've got to paint it so I've got a slight angle on the back so if I do the same there this will be like a 1950s typewriter so hopefully Right, so we've got the basic shape. Now the next thing I want to do is to make this toothpick thinner by sanding it. I'll put that in a drill and get a piece of sandpaper and make that a lot thinner so I can stick it on the top of there like so. Sanded down a toothpick and then added a piece of paper, but it looks too big. It's way too big for what uh, I want. So what I've decided to do is use a little bit of soldering wire. Now this soldering wire is about uh, 1.5 thick, so it's uh, a little bit thinner than all that toothpick. So that's what I had in mind, something like that. So what I'll do is I'll paint that and then cut that off and uh, stick it on the desk. While the paint was drying I sorted out the station master's office and now the building is glued together for the first time. Uh, the only room left to do is the ticket office under there. Um, yeah, so I've been preparing the ticket office this, and I've sort of remembered where the fireplace is going to be. So it's going to be in this area here. So I'm going to leave this area free of any furniture or anything like that. So all I'm waiting for for this now is the typewriter to go on to the secretary's desk and then we can put this room in and then that will be all the rooms done then we can concentrate on the outside of the building because there's a lot of work left to do on the outside I have temporarily rigged up the lighting to see uh, what we can actually see inside the two rooms that I have lit up. Uh, this is the station master's office, so you can see the cupboard, the chair, and the bureau. Yeah, you can make out the bureau, and then you move along to the next window, you can make out the lamp, the telephone, the book that he's left open on his desk, and uh, yeah, obviously he's not in there because he's out on the balcony at the moment. Yeah, you can clearly see the telephone and and there's a clock on the back wall there there we are and uh, obviously there's the main hall right so let's have a look into the ticket office so there's matey there he's just waiting for the uh, first customer to arrive. There you can see the, the desk there with the lamp, some paperwork. You can just make out the phone there to the left on the desk. Let's see it better through this window. Here you go, there's the phone. Right, so the secretary. The light's a little bit bright in this room. Just zoom in a bit. Yeah, 
Right, you can make out the secretary sitting on the chair. And you just about to see the typewriter. Yeah, that light is a little bit too bright for the camera to pick up the typewriter. Zoom in again. Let's see if we can go beyond the window. Oh, there, there you go, there's the typewriter. You just make out the typewriter. Right, so with all that done, it's time to focus on the main building itself. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had the main building actually sat on the platforms. And uh, this is the first time that it's actually sat on the platforms, fully assembled. And uh, yeah, it looks as though it should always be there now. It's, it's part of Jarrah Road. Apart from these two guys here, they did not want to be part of it. They bang their heads on a fireplace. So I'm sure I will find a place for them on the station somewhere. So this is only temporary um, because there's still a lot of work left to do. Um, there's roofs, there's guttering, there's stone fascias, um, drain pipes, but um, yeah I have made a little bit of a start by putting in a brick edge around the top two corners here and here because we will see them no doubt but yeah so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed what you've seen until next time enjoy your model railways bye for now bye